Hi, and welcome to the Hillbilly Tech Show. Today I'm going to be going over types of video cards and actually replacing a video card in a machine. Now, there are two types of video cards out there today. There's the old standard, which is called your AGP slot, and it stands for Advanced Graphics Port. Uh, there's also one called PCI Express, which they're up to 16 right now, PCI Express 16. And that is the new type that is a little faster than AGP. It handles graphics better. It's got better bandwidth. Uh, can handle a lot more than the old AGP slot can handle. Now, I've got two video cards here before we go. Now, the top one right here is an old AGP slot. You notice it has a small connector here and a little hook on the end. And the other one here is the PCI Express 16 slot. You notice how the connector is a lot longer and you'll have one notch right at the very beginning and then no notches until the very end and it will hook. That's how you can tell them apart. The AGP slot is a lot smaller and the PCI Express is a lot longer. Now generally old motherboards will have a marking on the board itself for AGP. Let me zoom in here and we'll see. You'll see right here at the very top this took the ports as AGP 8X, which means it's the AGP 8X standard. That's the speed of the channel that it's on. Now, generally, these ports are brown for AGP. The different manufacturers may make them different colors. It's not really a standard for a color, but uh, most of them will make them brown. Uh, below here is your PCI Express cards. They're not used a whole lot anymore. Most stuff is on board besides your video. Uh, the first thing you want to do before you ever even think about replacing this, uh, find out what type of card you have because the AGP and the PCI Express are not cross compatible. You cannot replace one with the other. You either have one or the other. There are some hybrid machines that will handle both, but they have two separate ports. But you cannot put an AGP in a PCI Express or vice versa. Uh, once you have your card and ready to install, make sure you have no power going to the machine. Make sure your power supply is turned off and no cables at all, not even a monitor cable, nothing. Okay, the next thing some people like to do is ground themselves when working on a motherboard because a static shock can actually fry your car or your motherboard or anything on your system. Now, most people make a mistake of grounding themselves to the chassis of the machine. That's wrong. The machine is not actually grounded this way. You need to ground yourself to something, another device that's a piece of metal that actually goes to a ground. That's the only way you can be properly grounded. Uh, once you've got that taken care of and you're ready to take the card out, you have one screw. It's right here that holds the screw. Take that holder out, unscrew it, and that's what holds the, the card to the chassis. Now, these particular cards, uh, whether AGP or PCI Express, will have a latch on the very back of it. And there's a little hook that I showed you the card has, a little green hook. That There's a latch that goes over top of that that holds the card in. So I can't, I can't pull it out without doing that, undoing the latch. This is good if you're transporting your machine because you don't have to worry about the card coming loose. When you're powering up your machine, all you have no video. You don't really have to worry about that with these cards. They're pretty safe when you're transporting as long as everything's tight. You don't have to worry about that. And now to remove it, you simply put your finger back here, pull the latch down, and the card just pops right out. And this is your standard AGP card. This is a little older AGP card, which has two two notches in it, and that is a, a newer AGP card. The connectors are the same, but some of them may have different notches in them because they came from different uh, AGP slots. Some AGP 2X and 4X, which are a little different, but they all have they all share the same slot. Now to replace the card, it's pretty much the exact way we took it out. What you want to do is make sure you you line up the hole, put it put the VGA connector through the slot in the back first. Then line up all your slots with the PCI Express slot, and just with one push, push in. Now you should hear a snap right back here. That's the little connector that's snapping. If you don't have that snap, you need to push on the back here just a little bit until it snaps in. 
because if it doesn't snap in, your card can come loose at any time and you lose video, or it could even short out the card. Now, once you have that in, you simply start screwing the cable back in. Alright, we have a successful card installed. Now, uh, some boards will have onboard video. 99% of the time, if you put a AGP or a PCI Express card in here, it will disable the onboard video. In rare cases, it won't, which means you'll have to go through your BIOS and actually turn off the onboard video. Now, every BIOS is different. It should be somewhere listed as onboard peripherals or onboard devices, something similar to that in your BIOS if you have to turn it off. But nowadays, you really don't have to worry about that because... Uh, most PCI Express boards will turn it off, so you don't have to worry about it really. Uh, now, this is a successful install. Uh, it should be able to power it up and have video, and it should work fine. Once you get the, up in the windows or whatever you have, you can install your drivers, and it should work right up. Now, one thing I recommend, don't ever use the drivers that come out of the box. I wouldn't recommend it. With video cards, I would go to the website and download the latest drivers. Uh, because you don't know how long the box has been sitting on the shelf. It may have been there for a year, and you might have five drivers that are newer than this. So you need to download the latest drivers, and it'll make the card run as fast as it possibly can. If you have any questions on this or anything, please let me know at hillbillytechshow at gmail.com. Or if you want to visit my blog, go to hillbillytechshow.blogspot.com. Thank you.